The Good Buddies Anime Podcast is hosted by two rowdy, foul-mouthed American cowboys. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, Good Buddies, what's up and welcome into the Good Buddies Anime Show. I am your good buddy, Roger. And I am your good buddy, Brandon. And uh, we are doing it again. Is that, that time, time of the season? It's Is the time. that time of the season? It's the time of the season for tier list. Damn, dude. Doom, doom, doom. Ah, damn. <laughs> That's the jam, man. All right. Anyway, we are doing it. We're back again. It is time for good buddy Brandon and Rogers. Mount Vibe Check, baby. You. Uh, as always, uh, quick disclaimers. First of all, I'm the one who watched every one of these. It's my list, basically. Roger will have some input. He watched a few yeah. of these. He has not told me which one, so that'll be a fun surprise for me. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, our word is law. Deal with it. And if you disagree, hey, that's fine, man. It's okay that we're wrong and you're right. That's yep. how it works. Yep, 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 uh, yep, yep, yep. Furthermore, this is, of course... A vibe check. We uh, one episode, one episode of each of these. Some of them are up to two. Some of them are up to three. But one episode we're going off of. Uh, no deeper than that. No sequels on this list. We will talk about sequels at another time. And damn, there's some sequels this season. But we will get to all of that right now. Roger, anything else to say before we jump in? Uh, no, man. I do have an announcement. We'll, we'll talk about it towards the. We'll end. talk about towards it later. We'll, it, it might it might bring it down a little bit. So I will I will talk about it then. Yeah, man. Um, but, but let's do the thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's get on with the list. Let's go through here. All right, pick um, me one, baby. Uh, we do have two at the end yeah, that we'll two, have to soul read. Checks right here. Yeah, two those are reads. those are in black and white. That's why they're like that. Um, what you got for me? Let's see. Let's start with one I haven't watched yet, dude. I need you to tell me about <laughs> my stepdaughter is my ex. Okay, my stepmom's daughter. Sorry, my stepmom's daughter is my, my ex. stepdaughter is my ex. Is a very different show. Yeah, yeah. I did. And what I would it's, not be interested. in. <laughs> good buddy, it has been a long day for you, good buddy. It Roger has been a here. day. It's been a time. My my man's having a time. Here's the thing. You read that. You read my stepmom's daughter my is step my ex. My stepmom's daughter. You is know my the ex. first thing I think is this is gonna be fucking garbage. And I, uh, you know, at just as last season, you know, I I have learned. Uh, once again, I've been. Pr- it has been proven to me that I need to reassess my own little uh foibles and feelings. Cause you know what, show's not fucking bad. <laughs> All right, dude. Uh, so all this right. one uh, does what it says on the tin. First of all, a uh, guy and girl dated. They broke up. Now they're step siblings. There you go. It's sort of a reverse domestic girlfriend in that way, but they're both uh, so smart and proud. It takes a little bit of a love is war turn when they decide to play this game, so that they they don't the parents don't know they dated. They don't want people at their new school to know they dated. They just start in high school, so they play this game where basically they tell each other we need to act like normal siblings. And as soon as one of them does or says something that is not in the way a normal sibling would act, then they have to call the other one big bro or big sis because it turns out they were born on the same day and they don't, neither of them wants to be the younger sibling. That's the joke. Uh, pretty fun. Uh, pretty decent art style. It's all right. It's not quite as charming as either of those other two shows I mentioned. You know? That's a girlfriend? <sighs> God. Or love is war (laughs) but uh you know it's not bad and they definitely still despite like very clearly saying they don't like each other they still have some feelings for each other because toward the end of that first episode they get that close to making out well you know what i say dude no chromo there's no chromo no chromo i really thought this was going to be a real trashy no chromo kind of show but you know what it ended up being pretty good i think it's doing just fine. Yeah, it's doing just fine. It's doing just fine. It's doing just fine. There, it, it is it is not a. It it's is, not a tippy top. It's up there. It's not a tippy top. It's doing yeah, just it's fine. It's not my stepdaughter. Is my ex. I so. just realized I never <laughs> actually explained the different tiers. Let's hit them with that real quick. So we got the tippy top. This imagine a beautiful snowy mountain. Yeah, you got your best shows at the tippy top. <sighs> Yes, those that wind on the on the on the snow sounds. Uh, you got your snowy white plains of doing just fine. They're throwing snowballs. They're having fun. You got your cliffhangers. They're not completely garbage, but you got your glacial chasm. That's where the garbage goes. And then yeah. you got the ones that didn't even get to the mountain. They're snoozing at the lodge. They're a little bit boring. Yeah. And of course, as I always say, what's worse, being bad or being boring? That's up to you to decide. Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah, it really is up to you to decide because glacial cha- chasm might be worse than snoozing at the lodge. It might be, or maybe snooze. 
it's up to you. Usually some of the irredeemable stuff goes to the glacial chasm. Yes, truly irredeemable. Oh, we got one. Oh, we got one. We'll okay. get to it. I wonder if you can find it, Roger. I wonder if just giving these these different titles a quick glance, if you could guess which one your good buddy Brandon thought was actual garbage. Why don't you go ahead and pick me another one and we'll okay, see. Okay, man. I'm, I'm going to go for... Uh, let's go with Harem in a Labyrinth of Another World. My man! <laughs> you found it! I thought about picking a really good one right here. <laughs> oh, hell. Okay, so here's the thing about this one. So I'm gonna start, skip ahead if any of the following things I'm about to say upset you. Uh, straight up trafficking and sex slavery. Here we go. Mm. So, uh... Classics, dude. Jesus. It's a bog standard horny isekai. But to be clear, as I have read, the source material for this one apparently predates a lot of popular isekais like Konosuba, ReZero, Slime, uh, Isekai, all those. And because it will soon be relevant, it also, uh, the manga or light novel, whatever it was for this one, came out before Shield Hero. Oh boy. So. Dude's in a game, he finds out it's real and he can't leave after he murders some bandits and he's like, Oh God, what did I do? And he's like, well, I guess I live here now, fuck it. Uh, he's got an OP sword or whatever. Like literally all he remembers is hitting a thing that was like, start game, you can't get out of game. And he's like, whatever, I'm playing game. So he's in a, he got isekai, blah, 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 etc., etc. So the violent bits get this shadow sensory, the horny bits, and there are some fucking horny bits, get these really weird like yield signs and error windows, like like straight up like object not found looking shit oh, over the titties. Uh, if you really want to watch this, by all means, just look up the uncensored version. It is out there. Um, yeah, you can find it. So the main crux here is that, like in some other shows, fucking isekais right he ends up at the end of this episode at a slave trader uh here's the kicker though this guy specializes in beep. they beep it in the audio they don't show you what he says in the subtitles but if you look up the uncensored version you will see that this man specializes in sex slaves that's right straight up sex slaves they bleep it and censor it but he does no joke quote unquote say sex slave uh, main guy's like, oh, nice, so I can get somebody who can fight and fuck? I can fuck a sex slave? Oh, that's, I'm gonna get my dick wet. He has no problem with this. Zero problem with this. Not only that, but, like, homie... Man, I'm just gonna spoil this shit. Who, it, who, it's who is releasing this? Is this a Crunchyroll or High Dive? <sighs> it's on... I will let you know if it's on High Dive, so that one's on Crunchyroll, I believe, yes. Why? I don't fucking know, man. They literally have a bit... Look, obviously someone out there is, is gonna watch this, and, look, if you can watch this and that doesn't affect you and you aren't a fucking weirdo and you're just like, this is a show, it's like, fine, by all means, enjoy your shit. It seems weird, though. Like, they go so into it, though. Like, dude is, like, straight up giving this homie the hard sell when he's trying to sell a dude a slave. He's like, uh, oh, yes, uh, why don't you bring us some tea, honey? And homegirl comes in in a maid outfit, and he's like immediately, oh, my God, she's got to be the most beautiful girl here. No, the most beautiful girl in the world. I'm like, dude, you've been here for five minutes. You've met one girl. What are you talking about? And he's like, ah, I see you like her. You know, uh, think about her. She is one of the more attractive, uh, the most attractive girl I've got here. Yeah? And you know what else? Uh, she's actually a beast lady, so you can't get her pregnant. Yeah? And she's a virgin, so you no STDs. Yeah? It's like, dude, what the fuck is this? this show? It's garbage. Put it in the chasm. It's garbage. I'm ne I've never, I don't, I'm trying to think, have I ever dropped anything out of my uh, watch queue faster than that one? I don't know that I have. It was very upsetting. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, I'm glad we got that out of the way. And now I can never think about it again. I'm going to delete it right out of my notes app. And it's gone. That's there we next. go. There we go. Um, let's go with next. Let's go with engage kiss. Enga <laughs> oh boy. So engage kiss, uh, is some shit. So it is a show where basically we got a trash boy. He has no job, no money, and he's got two different hotties who are paying his bills and buying him lunch. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Right? What a, what a trash man. Turns out though, that what he does is he has a job, quote unquote. He's like a contractor among these other contractors. What they do is hunt demons. So he hasn't been taking any jobs, but he takes a job in this show. Uh, the one of the hotties who lives with him, um, it turns out she is a demon who powers up when they kiss. 
engaged. And boy, kiss. do they make out hardcore. Well, he he honestly like he he appears to find her a little too clingy and doesn't really like mm -hmm. uh, hanging out with her. But but she makes out with him. Hardcore. Oh, but she oh they kiss real hard when he's getting his ass kicked by this demon. Uh, full disclosure, I did watch this one. You did watch I this did one. Watch okay, this one. that kid. Tell me, tell me if that kiss isn't borderline pornographic. Yeah, I mean they were tongue in it, dude. They I'm were like, tongue in. She fuck. Dude. She bust the fucking spit hanging between them and shit. I was like, oh, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Decent animation. Yeah, actually pretty good animation. Pretty good animation. Real fucking dumb. Yeah. Real fucking dumb. Uh, I, I I like the character designs too. But you know what, dude? I will give this one the benefit of that that I think it's dumb enough for me to still give it three. Okay. I think I will give it three. All right. All right. I. Mm, there's a lot of shows this season. I will let you give this one three and, and report back to me. Yeah. I, now, I have this one marked as a cliffhanger, but if you like it, Roger. I thought the action scene was pretty cool. Action scene was pretty cool. Do you want to put it in doing just fine? Um, no, I think it's still a cliffhanger. Okay, it's a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Excellent. Okay. We um, got through that. Yeah. It was, it was, it definitely was wild. I mean, this show. Yeah, this show's This nuts. show fucking went places. Engage Kiss went places. Yeah, no shit. Dude. Like, what the fuck is going on I, here? It was pretty wild. There's also a bit where like, like he 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 says something about them being completely out of money or something, and she like grabs a bottle of sleeping pills, and she's like, "Well, I guess this is it." I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah. whoa!" It does have a very Fucking dark sense whoa. of humor. It does. Jeez, like it. Oh, I didn't like that. But yeah, yeah it's. Yeah. Not the worst I saw this season. We've yeah, already yeah. talked about that. What's next, baby boy? Uh, let's talk about one that I haven't watched yet, Here we but go. I want you to tell me about. Uh, Licorice Recoil. I think it's Lycoris Recoil. Lycoris? Okay. I thought it was Licorice the whole time. I think it's Lycoris. But I haven't watched it yet. Something so. like that. So here's the thing about this show is go watch like the first minute and a half of this one. Pause. That's crazy, right? Wild. Oh, man. So well, I didn't has watch a pretty. It, so I, I know, know you didn't. It's got a pretty <laughs> fun like minute and a half intro, but point is uh this is our cute girls what have guns series of the season uh you got a serious but loose cannon assassin girl who gets sent to work with the former best of the best assassin girl at the former best of the best assassins girls new less murdery job uh the whole thing with this one is basically homegirl the one girl is very serious has no problem killing people to get the job done because they're like spies or assassins or something other girl has now decided like she doesn't want to kill anybody she's trying to save everyone including like oh these are criminals she's gonna try her best to just knock them out kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh bang it out and, bro, and she's know? so fucking good at her job that she can get away with it and do it without uh much mess so you get this pretty sweet like odd couple pairing really clean really smooth animation if you're into like the intrigue that this series is going to bring and some cool gunfights and whatnot then i think this might be one of the better ones this season uh i i'm gonna put it tippity top tippity top okay. i think it's the first one it's it's crazy dude because i was torn between watching this one first and watching engage kiss first wow now what made me decide to engage kiss more i don't i don't really know kiss is in town you want to see some smooching yeah i, I, I guess i wanted to, i guess i wanted to see how that that name filtered like what what it actually meant and now i know maybe <laughs> it means they're making a heart god only knows dude what how how powerful can he make this girl? maybe maybe oh god how far is he gonna go Engage Kiss, that's going to be the run and, the run and talk from the All rest right, of this man. one, I'm sure. But yeah, I think I think at least okay. watch the first episode of Lacor's Recoil. I yeah, It's also a, like like way funnier than it should what's be. What's the animation look like in this one? It looks good. It, it, it actually, good? like the action scenes, I think, could give Engage Kiss a run for their money. And like Engage Kiss yeah. has good-ass action yeah, scenes. Yeah, sure do. Uh, it's less fantastical, despite the beginning of it. I thought it was going to be a little fantastical, but yeah, check it out. Just tell me what you think, okay, man. Okay, uh, okay. I, get, I, I really liked it. I liked it enough to put a tippy top, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So let's it does see. do the thing where they have like one black guy and he's got, uh, you know, he doesn't look like a full on caricature, but he's got, he's got some weird colored lips and I'm like, mm. yeah, but also he's got long hair and I'm like, maybe that's what I would look like if I wore a, whatever the male kimono is anyway. Um, let's see if we can find something that is snoozing the law. Oh, let's, there's there's several. Let's, let's see what see, you got. Dude, let's see. I mean, I feel like I know an easy one to try. Well, shoot it, man. Hit it. Oh, uh, well, then let's go shoot. Goal to the future. Now, did I give it away? 
Yes, you did. I gave it away. You you, I? you told me. Well, that was an accident. Well, whatever. Well, I, I don't think it was you it saying shoot. It was when we talked earlier. Okay. Yeah, it was when we talked earlier. So this one is apparently a spinoff slash sequel of a series from a series from like '93, but whatever. Spinoffs are cool. Uh, kind of a sequel. I don't know, but I watched it. So generic soccer anime. It tries to hook you in by being super like way too dramatic. Uh, so dude used to play soccer as a kid. He doesn't play in high school. He had a bestie who was on the team with him, but now his bestie's gone and he just doesn't want to play anymore. Uh, and he's like, he hates the game and he screams and he cries. And I'm like, this is weird. He almost gets in a fight with a guy who is still playing soccer. It's a lot. Um, but yeah, that's the basic story. It's kind of meh. Honestly, it looks really weird. Like, I do not like the art or animation on this one, and it reuses a decent amount of animation, like the one or two shots they that made they made look good. But are their faces going through the net? Their faces look weird as fuck. So, but I mean, are they going through the net? No, but they do look terrible. And the the one thing they did nail was when the soccer ball like flies into the back of the net and does that, like psh, that spin thing in the net. Oh, they nailed that. They reused that animation like three or four times. They do that a lot. Uh, but yeah, I flipped up flopped on whether this one was boring or trash. And I think I'm landing on boring. Uh, the outro is pretty good though. And there's some flashback bits from the original series that look really fucking cool. So maybe just watch that. All right, man. So it's, it's a snoozy snoozing at the lodge. It's a snoozy. It didn't even get to the mountain. It's snoozy. Okay. What you got next? We can go uh, anywhere here. We managed to get one in each. So yep. what do you got next? Yeah, let's see. Um, okay. Here's the one that I want you to tell me about because I think it dropped yesterday or the day before. I have not got to watch this, but I am looking to watch it. Okay. It is the Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. <clears throat> so I did not write a lot of notes for this one. Real obvious. Read it and you figure it out. So read that title. Yakuza Tough Guy is a little too loose for the boss's liking. So to teach him some responsibility, he assigns him to watch over his young daughter. This is like... I don't know. She's in elementary school. She's like eight or nine, maybe. Maybe young. Maybe seven. Um, easy, easy, easy to compare this one to Way of the House Husband, but instead of uh, a bunch of crazy jokes about that good white powder, it's just a bunch of cute shit. The kid is adorable. The dude, like, tries to, you know, relate to her. She is not having it. She's freaked so, out by this so guy. So more of a Hina Matsuri than, yeah, a, sure, than a Way sure. of the House Husband. Or maybe a... Uh, both, both which I did really enjoy. Yeah. I, I think it's good. Um, I did read one thing where one review I was getting, you know, second opinions and whatnot, and they were like, you know, it's it's between Way of the House Husband, Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting, even like those Yakuza games, how goofy they the characters are in those. It really feels weird that we're doing this softening of this these straight up mobsters who kill people. Yeah, I there's that, probably a discussion to be had about that, but also yeah. eh, it's fine. I think it's actually pretty common. Oh, I yeah, mean, they do it for you know. Any country that has a crime syndicate, they always, you know, I think it's more or less because it's uh, interesting. Sure. It's even like with like cop dramas and stuff like that. Yeah. Those end up, you know, it's not, you know, so much that I love the police or anything, but sometimes those shows do end up being interesting. Is that propaganda? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, okay. It's G.I. Joe, man. G.I. Joe G. I. Was, a, was a big, big ploy to get get kids to want to join the military Good old did time. i join the military no but do i have several gi joes yes i sure fucking do yeah you fucking do you uh, nerd you do i like gi joe i love me some lasers <laughs> okay this guy but yeah uh it's a little slow but it's super cute it's fine i yeah. think it's doing fine it's okay. doing just fine doing just yeah, fine. it's just fine okay what you got um next? let's well, you want to do another one that i watched it, yeah what you got Okay, dude, let's talk about Shine On, uh, uh, Bakumatsu Bad Boy. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you watched this, because I really was not sure this, watching while watching it if I loved it or hated it. This this is one of the three shows that I watched that okay. I will tell you are dripping with style. It's very style. So that's the thing. is first, like The first thing I noticed is like, why the fuck do all these look like them shaman kings? Yeah. Same dude. <laughs> so, like, the first scene of this one, I was like... Man, that looks weird. And then I was like, whoa, that looks good. And I was like, oh, that looks weird. And I was like, whoa, it looks good. I was, I was, it's very swingy this show. Yeah. For me, it's real fucking swingy. It's so, got that, it's got that old samurai western grain yeah, dog. over, over every fucking frame. So it's the, yes, it does have that. Oh, it's so weird. But I, I wasn't, 
I totally kind of like off. it, dude. I yeah, like I don't know. It, yeah. So it's the end of the Edo period. Uh, dude has sworn vengeance on a group of samurai after they killed his family. He is caught and sentenced to death, but he and several other criminals are offered the chance to join the Shinsengumi, the Shogunist elite fighters, who in this one have Sentai-style color-coordinated swords and shit. Mm -hmm. So the other characters are a bunch of weirdos with weirdo nicknames. You got the Hitman, he's a serious killer. The Psycho Doctor, who agrees to join so that yeah. he can have a lot of corpses to dissect. And even the cross-dressing woman, who, get this, is a woman who cross-dresses. Yeah. That's, that's not very fair. She actually dresses like a guy to prove she can fight better than the guys, but they only refer to her as a woman after that, so yeah, whatever. Weird bunch. Uh, it's hard for me to pin this one down, because yeah. like the art goes from looking amazing to looking like trash, and then back to amazing. And the dialogue ranges from stuff like, this shit world still smells like shit, to after that, there's a bit where dude sees another family about to get attacked, and in a shocking moment of introspection says, no, the world doesn't need more guys like me. Like, damn, that's pretty good. It's just yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So I, I kind of will follow in. I, I actually thought the animation was good and consistent all the way through. And the, it was the first couple scenes I was it kind of threw me off. But after that, yeah. like the fights were decent. Yeah. Like it's not bad. I really do think that the show has a good style. It's unique. I like it. Yeah. Um, I will say this is one of two shows that I watched that um move a little fast mm -hmm. and I don't actually know what the fuck is going on. I'm not 100% sure. So I, and I'm not so sure. I'm not willing to say that it's not, but I'm not willing to say that it is that kind of, that good kind of weird like Sunny Boy yeah. or Odd Taxi. I don't think it I don't think it's that level. I do think it has potential to be really interesting. Um but like here's the thing. it's like so I asked myself several times, do I like this? Yeah, I, I think I like this. Do I like this? I I was in the same boat, man. I, I was hate back the and name. forth. I think I think the name's kind of well. So that's the thing. So it's the Bakamatsu period, the end of the Edo period, the Bakamatsu time, which a quick wiki wandering informed me that this is when like you basically have the dudes who are loyal to the emperor and the dudes who are still loyal to the shogun. Yeah, and yeah, the they, shogun guys had like their elite like samurai police yeah, the who are the Shinsengumi. Yeah. So we've you ever seen watched one of the Maroni Kenjins? We, you know the yes, are. we've seen animes about this subject matter and whatnot before. So this is just another one. This one's like just extra goofy and a little bit weird. And I don't hate it. I think I landed on doing just fine. Yeah. Okay. You think doing, that works? Yeah, I think it's doing. I think it's doing just fine. Um, I will give it the full three. Uh, I was definitely, dude. It just moves so fucking fast. Yeah, it's it's breakneck. Yeah, and I don't hate that, but also, man, there's a but lot. But there going are big on. gaps of information that, like, you know, like whenever. Also, so, so in the first episode, he gets caught right at the beginning. Yeah, and then they un. And then it just helmet. Suddenly he's and this other this, guy. They, yeah, there's this thing about these guys with these masks, and then those guys are just fucking gone. Yeah. What the fuck happened? Also, I do love that like they have all the criminals lined up and how you, did these guys get caught so easily? Yeah. You can tell which one isn't gonna make it because he doesn't have crazy colored hair. Yeah. <laughs> like there's just a normal dude there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like that guy ain't gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. And what, yeah, yeah, and it, it's uh, one of them for sure is weird. Like, how the fuck did this guy get caught? It's it's a hell of a question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I'm not out. But it is weird. It du hey, dumb isn't bad. Yeah, it's yeah. a little dumb. It is it is dumb, and I'm okay with that. But we got one on here that I, I think is too dumb for me. I we'll need I need that. I need some explanation to kind of go wouldn't in it, there. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, uh, but but overall, you know what? I hate the name. I kind of like the show. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, they all look like Shaman Kings. They do look like Sh All right. All right. What's next? All right, man. Let's let's go to one. I, I'm curious to see. I've seen uh, images posted from uh -oh. this one. I have not watched it. I considered watching it. Oh, man. Um, let's see what you tell me about Vermil and Gold. Oh, boy. There is one image in particular that I have seen everywhere. Okay. So, I mean, if it's in that first episode, I've seen it, but... So here's the thing, Vermeil and Gold, first of all, when I looked it up, it had a much longer title. Uh, not the longest title this season, but the most syllables. I will read the full title I found. Vermeil and Gold, colon, a desperate magician barges into the magical world, magical world alongside the strongest calamity. This one is on high dive. Uh, I do have that high dive now, by the way. You do have that high dive now. Had to get it. Made yeah, but don't, out, baby. don't tell me about that one show. The uh, Don't tell me about... Um, I'm not going to tell you about it. The Executioner in a Way I'm not going to tell you about Because I do have it in my queue. Okay. So for Meal and Gold, uh, first thing I wrote, man, this one's horny. So first year boy to Magic High School has perfect scores in every category except summoning. And unless he can conjure and procure a familiar, he can't move up to the next grade. 
Conveniently, he stumbles upon an old summoning tome and ends up calling forth a super hot, super nude, big titty demon, I'm gonna say MILF, uh, who's super wet for his potent, potent mana. Um, honestly, has some decent animation, uh, manages to crack a joke or two. My only real problem here, like, I'm... My only real problem is that this is what appears to be a grown ass ro woman who is looting all over a high school kid who they they make the bo it's one of the few shows I've seen. You know, normally it's like normal dude and like the girl looks it's super the young. It's American dream, baby. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, Roger, Roger, you know what he says? Kids these days getting luckier and luckier. You sack of <laughs> shit. But so it's normally it's like you look at like a Haran San. Don't or, make it right. Just make or it like a um, <laughs> or like another show we're going to talk about a little later. It's like dude looks normal. Girl looks like a small child. This one we have what appears to be an adult ass demon woman. And the dude does look very young to be in the grade he's in. But here we are. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's not the worst thing I've seen this season. Okay. Okay. I put it in cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger, okay. It's not in the chasm, but it is so very the, horny. The image I keep seeing, you know the you know okay, those, bring uh, it. you know those neck pillows or whatever that, that are like the U's that come around your neck? Yeah. There is apparently a scene where she just has that, but it's her It's breast. her titties. Yeah. Yeah. And then she does try to grab a ding dong. I was like, what is this it's, beautiful it's looking it's show? So horny dog. <laughs> Yeah, you should check this I'm one out. I want to see what go. you think. I'm going to give it a go, dude. Yeah, it's horny as fuck. But, I mean, it's not the worst thing I've seen. It's a cliffhanger. You know, I'm not all the way out. I'll give I'll give it three. I'll give most of these three. Okay. Not Glade, not uh, Harriman and Labyrinth of Another World. Fuck that shit. All okay. right, what's next? Okay. Let's knock out this bad boy right here. My we Isekai Life with this big-ass title. So this one does me, have the longest title uh, by word count. My Isekai Life, colon, I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. This one is also on high dive. So if you got it watching Isekai, you could do worse. Dude, here's the... So here's what's cool about this one. The one cool thing about it... I'll, I'll tell you the cool thing at the end. Okay, so dude has already been isekai So apart from brief flashback, there's no mention of his real life or any of that. He is now a tamer in this fantasy world uh, who has an army of slimes. Slimes are very cute. I don't know what okay. to tell you. They just are. Okay. He's got a big wolf, and he's got at least one dryad, uh, which is a sexy plant lady. The trick is he's also a sage, so he can combine spells and or use spells through his, you know, animal cohorts, including the slimes. And shoot, the slimes are shooting fire out of their mouths and shit without having to actually be there. So basically, basically, dude is up in a tower doing the big fight scene, controlling the battlefield like it's a fucking RTS. Like he's doing a, was it, Halo Wars or Command and Conquer Civ or yeah. something. Yeah. So Isekai's, here's the only thing that I think is kind of cool about this one. Is that Isekais have gotten to the point where this dude can, off the bat, do the whole, I'm going to break the established rules to overcome these odds thing. Because we don't have to establish the rules. You pretty much already know them. So when he starts combining spells and using spells through the slimes and doing shit like that, it's like, you can be like, oh, I see what he did there, like doing this thing without having them having to explain why normally you couldn't do that shit. Which is kind of cool. But also, hey, it's boring as fuck. It's a snoozer. <laughs> it's a snoozer, dude. It's just you've seen it thirty times before. Yeah, man. You know? it, I, if I even, if I even get this, if I get a whiff to something, my man, it's Isekai. I'm not fucking watching it. I'll dude. tell you. I told you. I told you before. There's a lot of Isekai seasons. So I do appreciate they put it right in the title for me. They did. It's very convenient. There is at least one Isekai. In every tier of this list except Tippity Top. I will tell you that. But we got one that I think is up there. Okay. You know? Okay. Not all the way up there, but it's up there. So we'll get to that. Okay. Uh let's let's check out uh Tell me about uh Chimimo. Chimimo. <laughs> uh I think that's how you pronounce that. But yeah, Chimimo uh is pretty interesting. So first of all, it looks like some straight up kid show like goofy shit. Uh but then it has some not like super adult stuff in it, but like enough that you're like, well, that's not, you know, you wouldn't see that in a, in like a kid's book or something, the way, the, despite the way it looks. So basically there's these three sisters, uh, which are visited and soon overrun by these 12 goofy little squishy creatures. They, they kind of look like these little, little gooey puffballs 
little mochi balls uh, and they got horns. Each of them has like a horn and they're super cute. They're adorable. They kind of look like Egg Dog. If you ever seen those Egg Dog videos, they kind of look like Egg Dog. If you don't know what Egg Dog is, jump on YouTube and type in Egg Dog real quick. It's cute. Um, turns out that these are the harbingers of this demon named Jabberwock the Eighth, who intends to take over the earth in the name of hell. The problem is he's super duper inept and ends up just moving in with the sisters as live in help, which is pretty fun. You know, it's got a really simplistic art style. It's cute. It's a little eye straining the first uh, at first because it's very bright. Uh, not the brightest show this season. We'll get to that. But I like it. It's kind of cute. It's kind of goofy. I think it's doing just fine. Doing just fine, man. Well, this season, this there's season, a of, this season as a whole is doing just fine. There's a lot of decent stuff here. Now, obviously, I mean, let's be real. I don't think there's a quite a few of these that are quite good. I don't think they're good enough. I'm going to end up watching the whole series. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of good stuff this season. There's also some full-on garbage, and we will get to it. All right, man. Let's talk about Prima Doll. Prima Doll. Here we go. Fucking Prima Doll. So Prima Doll. Let me find it in my notes. Uh, Prima Doll, this is our uh, Cute Girls What Are Terminators series of the season. So we got these robots that look like young girls called dolls. They are always called dolls. Uh, and they used to be used for war. Now, it seems at this point in the story that that war is over or mostly over. And so a bunch of them work at a cafe. But probably there's going to be some battles and shit. We'll see. The art style on this one is really fucking good. Um, it's like... It is like that overly cutesy, like, oh, look at this girl in her cute little dress with her cute little pink hairs and her big fat eyes and all that. But it's very well animated. I, I really did enjoy the looking Moe's, at it. Dude. It's Moe as fuck, dog. Uh, there is a bit in the middle where the new, speaking of, there's a bit in the middle where the new girl is being taught how to serve and cook at the cafe. Uh, that's super cute and funny. And there's a few robots in the kitchen that miss the super kawaii Moe mode update that look kind of rad, like they still got glass and gears and shit. Uh, but that's like two minutes in the in an ocean of what to me just felt like some boring try hard drama. It didn't always work. In fact, most of the time it didn't. But it has these moments that I liked it pretty good. But mostly it's boring. I think it's a snoozer. Snoozing. But I'm, I'm probably going to give this one a couple more. Despite it being a snoozer, I'll probably give it a couple more just to see. Snoozing at the lodge, baby. It's a snoozy, but <clears throat> it's very pretty. It's very fucking pretty. I almost want to say, you know, that that great animation is wasted on it, but I won't go that far because maybe it turns out it's really good. We'll find out. All right, man. You want to do another one I watch? Yeah, See man. how you're feeling about it? Give me one. Give me one. Let's me see one. how you're feeling about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. This is the one that's too dumb for me. Too fucking dumb for me. Okay. Uh, this shit dumb as fuck, bro, is the first thing I wrote. So dude wakes up to find a lizard in his bed. Lizard says he's a knight who must find the princess and defeat the evil mage who wants yeah. to destroy the world. Yeah. And then dude promptly hucks that lizard off his balcony. <laughs> he throws that fucking lizard so far. It it honestly it has funny bits. Um but yeah, from there it's like this jerk of a reluctant hero, a very serious lizard who's trying to train him and a giant hammer floating in space that threatens to destroy the earth and a girl who says she's going to stop that hammer from destroying the world so she can destroy the world. Yeah, uh, it's got a few laughs, but it's a little too LOL random for me, and the animation felt very janky. Jank okay. is all fuck. Do you disagree? Uh, I, d I don't think the animation was, I don't think it was bad, but I don't think it was. It's below average, certainly. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I would call it maybe average, but ah. um, I did like the show. Sir, you on a previous episode described uh, MHA as being uh, like if that's average animation. I would say it's slightly, that would be slightly above. Okay, now you would, yes. Yeah. But this show, this show, I would say this show is below. I don't know. This, uh, the animation didn't, it didn't offend me. It didn't, I didn't see anything that jumped off at me that I hated. Uh, I like the way that stupid ass lizard looks. Dude. Yeah. I will say that apparently the source material for this one is super fun and a lot of people were looking forward to this one. So They got them I, sharp teeth, dude. I like yeah. that too. I, I would say let's hope it gets better so that the people who were looking forward to this one have something good. But uh, for me, I think I'm not going to say it's trash. I think it's a cliffhanger. You think okay, okay. If you'll, you if you like it, no, we'll we'll put it at the. It, I, I was gonna say I was gonna say I will not allow you I would, to do it. Just I would fine. I would move it from glacial chasm or snoozing at the lodge. Oops, to cliffhanger. Um, I, yeah, I would put it in cliffhanger. Yeah. I actually think that it's better than a cliffhanger. Okay. But 
but um, I, I I did enjoy it. I got some good laughs. Um, he kept fucking throwing that stupid lizard, and that stupid lizard kept saying that bullshit. It just popped back magically. Yeah, it had its moments, and, and I liked it. Oh, I liked that it had these moments too, where he was just like talking under his breath and stuff. Dude, like, what the fuck is going what on? The fuck is that goddamn is bullshit. Lizard. His power looks really dumb. The, the moment that he used his power <laughs> to blow up the teacher's skirt, you yeah. fucking perv. Yeah. Hmm. And she's I like, like did that. you see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did, fuck did off. I, it was okay. I, it's not. It's not I, trash. Okay. Okay. I thought it. It's yeah, as we'll, close as it gets to trash for me without being trash. But okay. It's not trash. We'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes overall, but um. What's next? I thought I thought it was pretty good. That's eh, fine. Um, let's talk about when will Ayumi make his move? When will Ayumu make his move? I think it's Ayumu. That's what it looks like to me. Okay, so it was very hard while watching that. This one's also on high dive. Uh, this one's also on high dive. Uh, it's very hard when watching this to not compare it to a Haran song from last season. It's not even like that serious, but you got a super hard face boy. Oh, did you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. Nice. You got zoom a super hard face times. boy. You got a high school girl who looks like she's 10, and he can't beat her at this fucking board game. But here they play Shogi instead of Reversi. Uh, a san should play Reversi. Okay. Uh, but whereas a san gave you 10 or so dry but very funny episodes before addressing the whole will they, won't they possibilities between the two of them, this one puts it right up front. Dude is straight up in love. He is obsessed with this girl, and he she knows it. She knows it, but he will not admit to it until he beats her at Shogi. So it's not bad, but like like the other one earlier, it didn't charm me as much as similar shows. I do wonder maybe if I had watched this scene, this one before Haransan, would I have liked it more? I don't think I would have. Haransan's just kind of got that yeah, really dry humor. Yeah, we're up to about humor. six episodes on that. I do like a Haransan. It's lot. really I like that show a lot. This one's it's okay, um, but yeah, I mean it's again it's one of those where like you know I, like I say I don't trust like that. You got a high school girl who is tiny. She's got a huge head. She looks like an actual child. The other like girls in her class do not look anything like that. They look like actual you know human high school girls who look the same age as the boy instead of her. So I don't know if it, maybe it's fine. I, again, I've jumped to judgments on that kind of stuff before and been proven wrong. A horror song. This one kind of boring. Um, I don't think it's boring enough to be boring, though. I think it's a cliffhanger. I don't think it's that bad. All right, man, it's hanging from that cliff. Yeah, it's hanging. Um, look, tell me, tell me about the other shiny one here, Shine Post. Shine Post. Uh, I was really shocked by how much I liked this one. Okay. So this is our cute girls, what are idols series of the season. There's a lot of cute girls, what are whatever shows this season. So idol girl trio Tings, T I N G S. Every other letter is capitalized. Fun. They are floundering as they near the end of their first year as a group. As such, their agent gives them an ultimatum. You need to sell out this 2,000-seat venue for the anniversary show, or we're breaking you up. Uh, enter their new manager, a very serious dude who seems to have some sort of power where we, he can see the auras on people. They tell you what it is at the end of the show. I will not spoil it right now. Maybe I'll whisper it to Roger later because uh, it's honestly kind of cool when you find out what it is. But he can see these auras coming off of people, basically. Um, animation's rad. It uses, like, like actually one of the better animated shows, I think, this season. So it uses CG for, like, the dancey bits, particularly at the beginning. But it's very good at covering up, like, the CG bits so that it doesn't look jank. Like, they'll either, like, the CG bits, there's a girl on stage dancing, and, like, the CG bit is, like, when it's in the far shot, and then, like, it'll do, like, oh, a light flashes in front of what would be the camera so that, like, you don't see her for a second, and then she's, like, rotoscoped, and it looks really fucking good. So it's, like, they do this really cool mix of it, and there is a lot of movement in this show where it is rotoscoped that sometimes can give you that little, like, it's a little too fluid kind of feeling. But I think it works and it looks really good to me. Um, I, I would love it if you could check out an episode of this and tell me what you think about it. But yeah, it's it's sometimes it's a little uncanny smooth, but mostly I think it looks really good if you're asking me. Ultimately, though, it is an anime, idol anime and those tend to be pretty samey. So I'm not putting it in tippity top. I am putting it in just fine. I I was shocked by how much I enjoyed Shine Post. I, mean, I, I did not think I was going to like it that much. It is doing it just fine. Uh, just fine. Uh, Brandon, why don't you tell me about Black Summoner? 
I will tell you about the Black opposite Summer. of shine. My guy, the first line of this one, the very first fucking line. Have you ever heard about being reincarnated in another world? Fucking come on, man. Like, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I, I fucking have. Yeah, I click off that shit. Right after that line. So I, I'll be, I'm gonna be real with you. I was, I was catching up on some of these very late at night a few nights ago, and I put this on. I was like, eh, I'll watch one more. I put this on. It's like you know, a little after one. I'm like, I should be asleep. Fuck it, I'll watch one more. I put this on. That first line hits. I was like, click, nope, sleep. And then I finished it the next day. Um, so dude gave up his memories for stat boost. That's the big kicker here. Despite the fact that he does not re uh, recall his old life at all, he still somehow understands that he has been isekai He understands the concept of an isekai and that his old self must have been a real pro gamer because he gave him all the good skills. So it's like, okay, what's the point of saying he doesn't have his memories if he knows all that? Whatever. Um, anyway. He's got the appraisal thing so he can see how he fights some slimes, blah, blah, blah. He runs across a slave trader because all the isekais are doing it these days. It's not the worst isekai this season. Uh, it is very generic. And I guess the kicker with this one is that the goddess of reincarnation, who again, he also doesn't remember and they haven't showed her in that first day. They don't show her at all, but he instantly fell in love with her. And part of getting reincarnated is you get to have a familiar or something or a servant or something that works with him. And he picked her. So she is the voice and consciousness of the floating computer screen that follows him around and shows him shit. Mm. And she's like, I couldn't believe in this. Oh, you better level up so you can summon me. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, dude, this is real goofy. Um, I think it's a cliffhanger. It is not the worst. It is far from the best. It's a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger it is. If you gotta watch an isekai, there's better isekais. There's also worse isekais. So there you go. All right, Brandon. Why don't you tell me about Phantom of the Idol? Dog, just on that title, right? You'd think I'd hate this shit because, you know, so it has nothing to do with Phantom of the Opera. That's first off. First off, great. Excellent. So here's the thing. This one's on high dive. Uh, this dude, Nyoto, he thought that being half of a male idol, idol group called Zings, not Tings, that's the other show. This is Zings. He thought that would be easy money. He just goes out there. He looks good. Turns out he hates singing. He hates dancing. And he hates that he ha he's supposed to care about the fans. But then he meets Asahi, a cute former idol girl who misses the stage. And she misses her fans. And she wants to get back out there. Also, the reason that she is a former idol is because she died and is a ghost. They don't explain why he can see her, but he can. And she just wants to get out there and do some stuff. Uh, really cute, decent animation, although the actual performances do have that horrid, stiff CG. Uh, and it has some pretty de decent hooks, because you know what the trick is. Hey, I hate doing this shit. Well, I love doing this shit. I can't do this shit. And then she possesses his body and does the shit for him. Mm, okay. So it kind of it kind of kicks ass. I was like, whoa, that's pretty good. So, but yeah, that's the deal with this one. I'm into it. I'm way more into it than I thought it would be. There's also a bit, like, in the intro where, like, it's clearly like she may or may not have had a relationship or at least a crush on another dude in another idol group. And there's a bit where like you see him like approaching that dude. It's like, wait, is she going to possess him and then try to hook up with that guy? Well, now I'm really in. Uh, it's a tippity top. <laughs> a tippity top. Dude. I think it's a tippity top. I was, I was shocked as you are, my guy. Okay. It's so weird and goofy and I love it. Tippity top. It's, it is for me. Okay. Hey, hey! I'm if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That's fine. Maybe I'll hate it next episode, but I really liked okay. it after that first okay. one. What you got? Uh, let's talk about uh, Tippin. Tippin uh, with 15 exclamation points. It's very important that you put the 15 exclamation points. Uh, so this is our cute girls. What do comedy series of the season? And it's fine. Uh, 15 girls in five groups of three doing comedy trio routines. So it's very fast paced, but I feel like I'm missing a lot of the jokes. Um, so like you remember in Odd Taxi, you had like the comedy duo and like the whole thing, they just get up there and tell stories and that's the joke. It's like a very, it's a very like, it's a comedy, it's a thing they do in Japan. It's like the style of stand up comedy, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what this is. It's just three girls that get up there and tell jokes. And then the whole kicker is you see these jokes acting out like the stories they're telling. They're not telling jokes, they're telling stories that happen to be funny. And then they just randomly change the subject. This would be great if they would do that with a so be, uh, so we say. That would be pretty good. But yeah, the whole thing is like, it's very fast paced. And I feel like I'm missing a lot of the regional slash cultural references to the jokes. Um, like the one, some of the bits I got is like, you know, this character's from a certain area, so they talk different and like, that's their personality. They're kind of based on these different regions and whatnot of Japan and whatnot. So it's not bad. Um, the stuff that I got landed pretty well. Um, but like, I don't know for an American cowboy like me, it feels like a punchline that I'm just missing and it doesn't work all ever all the time. Uh, did have a few fun moments though. Intro and outro are pretty good. The animation's very smooth. There are some A1 reaction faces in this bitch. So if you just want some good shit to like send your buddies on fucking Discord or whatever, check them out. There's some good shit in here. Uh, mostly though, I was a little bored. I don't think I was bored enough to say it was snoozy. I think it's a cliffhanger. I think it's bad. Cliffhanger it is. I'll give it a couple dude. more. What'd you get? Uh, let's why let's talk about another one I watched. Oh, no oh, another one you watched. Let's talk about uh, Let's talk about your deco. You watched your deco, huh? I did watch it. You ever seen so? There is a series and I do have some thoughts about it, too. So so there is I'm a series uh, On Cartoon Network a while ago Called problem solvers with a Z you ever seen that? Mm -mm. I'm just gonna real quick. Well, you know, this can be a moment uh, of of chill in the recording because I want to show you just a quick still uh, from this show. Okay. Because this is what it made me think of uh, when I started watching this. That's Problem Solvers. It's bright and shiny as fuck. Yeah. And it hurts my eyes. Yep. That that is what I felt like when the show started. This show is if if I had to if I had to put it in some sort of term. Yeah. I would call it a sensory overload. Is there is a lot. Is a fucking lot, right? Yeah. So, uh, honestly, uh, here's here's my. And notes. I really want to like this one, and I don't yeah. hate it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it three. Yeah. Uh, so here's what I wrote. Honestly, I'm not sure what I watched here. So best I can tell is some kind of future where everyone has computers implanted in their eyes, so everything they see has holograms and shit over it. Basically, we are living in the metaverse, and everything seems to run off of an NFT social currency called love, which you earn whenever people heart your grams or whatever. Anything for the likes, man. I'll do anything for the likes. Uh, there's a phantom thief called Zero that main girl Barry wants to catch, and she runs into this hacker slash con artist who tricks people out of their love. It's bright and shiny and weird, and I don't know if I can stomach a ton more of it, but I'm watching it for now. It does, Where have, would, a, it does have a bit of a pedigree behind it. A little bit, yeah. I, I did see I did see some of the stuff. It's not mm, from the from uh, uh, from people that worked uh, did Cowboy Bebop, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was Dai Soto, maybe. Something like that. I don't think it's a Wantanabe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um. And then the uh, I can't remember who. The the people that did uh, Devil May Cry Baby. Oh yeah. It's it's just a lot, right? Uh, also, the same team did uh, uh Keep Your Hands Off My Zuken. Yeah, I do love Keep Your Hands Off My Zuken. So what do you think, man? Because I, I tell I think me where you would put it. I think okay. So first, let me tell you a little bit. I think it's a sensory overload. It's a lot. It is the second show next to uh, Shine On Bakumatsu Bad Boys that I was confused as fuck as yeah. to what was going on. Super like this show do not moves, know what I watched. This show moves at a breakneck breakneck speed. It goes so goddamn fast. They throw terms at you that you have no fuck. You know, it's you just, lingo you just, to the show. You, you got to ride, yeah. baby. You got to ride it. And and a lot of times, some of the text, it's one of these shows where like, oh, fuck, I'm going to miss text in this. Yeah. And you can't fully appreciate what they've done art-wise because you're trying to read so goddamn much. Yeah. And it is follow what is going on. This one would this one would really, if it was dubbed, it would help. Yeah, you know, maybe we'll get one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yo, definitely would. If if they if I see a dub popped up, I'm stopping watching it immediately and just gonna the dub just to catch up. the dub. Yeah, uh, because I think honestly, dude, I think this one is. Um, I would not call it uh, snoozing at the lodge. I would not call it uh, glacial chasm. I would not call it a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say that it's. A very very low end doing just fine. Okay, I had it marked as cliffhanger, but I, I'll go with you. I'll say it's doing just fine. Yeah, that I, works I have I have high hopes for the show. I think it has, I think it has the ability to be something cool. All right, I you know like this is a show. 
for for whatever reason, this should check so many boxes for me. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this is this it's summer. It's very strange. Yeah, it's, this it's is, the weirdest this one is this, this season. This is summer Sunny Boy. Yeah. But it is not Sunny Boy. No, not at all. It's we it's the Sunny Boy in that it's very strange. Mm -hmm. It is not the Sunny Boy in that Sunny Boy was pretty much instantly gripping. Whereas this yeah. one like I feel like if it's gonna do anything, it's gonna have to grow on me. Yeah. Like a filthy mold. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's got that pedigree behind it, dude. I mean, this is these are the people who do fucking Devil May Cry Baby, okay? Yeah. So they did it, Devil May Cry. It's baby. got potential, baby. It's got potential. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping the potential sticks. I'm hoping they do a dub. Please. You know, I don't I don't know how do a dub. I don't know how I feel about in the in the title image. I don't think this person and in the intro, this person hasn't showed up yet, but there is someone I know who you're talking about. There's too. like a black dude with a giant afro and crazy looking lips yeah. and I'm like alright man and obviously this show does have a very art deco style to it it's wild it's crazy to look at yeah um, yeah I don't know we'll see I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. What, we'll see what's happening. Uh, yeah, and, and as far as the black dude goes, yeah, I did notice, and he was exactly what you talked about earlier. But to to give this show a a benefit of the doubt, and maybe it's not my place to give it the benefit of the doubt, okay. but uh, the style of it is very, you know, it, it's just it's crazy. very stylized. So you know, if people are gonna actually, you know, most people have different colored lips and knees and whatever else. Jesus. Uh, All right. Well, okay. What's next, baby boy? We only got four left before we, we got get the four sword left, reads. dude. We got four left, and I'll I will end. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out which of these I watched. I would guess uh, Call of the Night. Don't say it. Don't say no. It, baby. Okay, don't I won't say. It. I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything. Pick so one. Pick one. Pick we'll, one. We'll just whittle it down. Now okay. I know what. Now now I know what you're gonna pick. So it's gonna be in the top two for sure. Um, uh -huh. So let's go with Parallel World Pharmacy, which I think is gonna be your Isekai that's doing just fine. Uh, you nailed it, baby. Uh, so Parallel World Bam. Pharmacy. Uh, so we got a medical researcher in the real world who's working himself to death. Literally, he dies. He's worked too hard. And then he wakes up having isekai into <laughs> the boy, into the body. Boy Brandon. Yes. Into the body of a young noble whose family has been best blessed by the god of medicine. And that young boy's name is Pharma. I shit you not. <laughs> so... Uh, Pharma finds himself recovering from a lightning strike and has developed strange new powers, which can diagnose and treat illnesses. Uh, art is really decent. It looks good. Uh, story is pretty standard, but I think it's the nicest isekai this season. If I was going to give any of them more than three, I think this is the one. I don't hate it. And the intro makes it look like some cool shit might happen. So, yeah, I'm into this one. I think it's doing just fine. You already put it there. We can stop talking about isekais now. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's uh let's talk about Smile on the Ars Noria the animation. Smile on the Ars Notoria the animation. Ars Notoria. So this is our cute girls what do magic series of the season. Uh first of all, it's fucking beautiful. Uh this is maybe like top 3 animation wise this season. It's very very pretty. Very fucking pretty. Um so it's a bunch of cutesy girls. They are at a magical school. They have a tea party and shit. There's these little like fire dudes who bring out the crumpets or, or scones or whatever. It they look like they look like the little fire like the, the big eyes like the fire thing from uh is it Hal's or is it the little fire guy who's in the oven? Oh, that's Cal uh Casper uh House Movie Cat. That's that is House Movie Cat. Okay, they look like that. They're very cute. She's fucking adorable. Um, but like nothing Calcifer happens. Casper or Houseford? I don't know. I, Hals, Calcifer sounds right. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's Calcifer. Calcifer. But, okay, you're going to look it up. Yep. <laughs> so here's the thing about the show is that, like, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Literally nothing happens. They they go to the store in the school. They meet a girl there. They get some scones from little fire guys. They have a tea party. They discuss whether it's right to put the butter on first or the jelly on first or the honey on first on the scone. It is Calcifer. It is Calcifer. Uh, and nothing happens. It's very slow and boring until the end of this show, this first episode. Because here's the thing. The intro seems to show these girls who do nothing fighting a bunch of very serious looking dudes in swords and cows and capes. And then the, there's cutesy nothing for like 20 minutes. And then the last two minutes we see those dudes fucking murdering people in a burning town like blood everywhere it's quite quite shocking so 
you know, it's easy to look at this and draw some comparisons to like Madoka and shit. I don't know about this one. I feel like I feel like they took the whole like do cute shit, but make it make it scary, make it make it actiony, seriously, make it dark, but like put all the cute shit in one part and just the dark shit in another part. And if it <laughs> gives us a mix of that, then this could be really good. I don't know. I don't know. I've got it in cliffhanger. I'm going to watch more of it though. Okay, cliffhanger. Yeah, it is. I don't, I don't know about that one, but I'm gonna watch more of it and try to find out. All right, man, are you ready? All right, what you got? These last two are like toward ready, the bottom dude? of the list. Okay, so that's I want you to tell me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about the one that I that I did watch last. Okay. So I want you to tell me about Extreme Hearts. Damn, I can't believe you. Why did you watch this? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch Extreme Hearts. Oh, you didn't. I swerved you, dude. That was a swerve. That was a swerve. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that was a swerve, baby. You, I was, you they just swerved me so hard. You swerved, you swerved just, me into a shoe, baby. You, just, you swerved me into a shoe. You just swerved in my glory. You just worked into worked me into a shoe. We gotta talk about them, boys. <laughs> uh, all right. So this is our cute girls. What do future sports show of the season? Okay. Uh, we have a failed musician girl who enters the world of hyper sports, which is a series of ultra athletic future games where competitors use special gear to make them throw farther and run faster special and jump gear. higher. Yeah, special gear. Special uh, gear. Uh, winners apparently get to wait, showcase wait. their singing and dancing skills, so the girl's all about it. Uh, therein lies the problem. It's so fucking convoluted. Like, they wanted to do an idol show, but they also wanted to do a sports show where they, like, fucking, like, fucking, I don't know, they're jumping around and doing shit. They're playing soccer in the first episode and apparently gonna play other sports in other episodes. And there's just so much going on, and yet it somehow manages to make no sense and bore the fuck out of me. It's snoozy as hell. Snoozy as hell, Snoozy dude. Snoozy as hell, this one. Snoozing at the lodge. Couldn't couldn't do it for me. Couldn't do it for me. All right, man. So now we get to talk right, about the one that I, the last one that I did watch, aside from some sequel season. All right, we're gonna talk about Call of the Night, dude. Call of the Night. So we got a teen boy. He's having uh, a time. also another one, along with Yuri Deco and um, very stylish. Yeah, shine on, dripping in style absolutely drenched in it so team boy is having a time he has insomnia possibly depression he doesn't seem to feel any emotions uh even when a super cutie I girl at, nothing at all. i was gonna say even when the cutie at high school uh confesses her feelings to him can you tell me how i feel i feel nothing at all damn roger this guy loves afi that's afi right yeah that's AFI. oh thank god uh, so he gives up on normal life which i guess means he drops out of school and just walks around at night uh, and this while, is his first night to walk. This is his first yeah. night. And, and wouldn't you know, his first night out, he runs across uh, a pink-haired girl who says she can help. Turns out she's a vampire. And after some wackiness, he decides he wants to be a vampire too. But it turns out the only way to become a vampire is to fall in love with a vampire. Mm. Oh, but he feels nothing at all. Wow, how's that going to work? He feels nothing at all. It's got a really cool art style. Re awesome use of color. That bit where he's walking and like you see the fucking stars above oh. him. Oh, Dude, the way they do the nighttime Absolutely in this show, they make it look amazing. It's very pretty. Um, the camera's a little bit leery when the girl's around. You know, it likes to focus on her uh, exposed midriff and thighs and whatnot, which is, I mean, whatever. Sure. Uh, and the dude is a little shitty and boring, but of course he's the male protagonist in a rom com, so of course he's shitty and boring. Yeah, I think he has potential, dude. Yeah, I don't. I don't hate it. I think it's there. I, was, there was generally there was one funny part in this show. Okay, for tell sure, me about it. Where he ran back to high five those guys because yes. he wasn't living his and life. And one of them just straight up pukes fucking on his shoes. Right on his shoes. <laughs> just straight honk, homie. Straight honk. He ran great. back. That boy ran back for a high five. <laughs> I did like when um. So she, I think he does have a little spritz of character there. Maybe we'll find out. I did like the bit where uh she like is like you know trying to get him to fall asleep so she can suck his. Blood. Yeah, and she's like, "Is he asleep? Oh, dang, he's asleep." He's like, "I'm just gonna pretend to be asleep." Mm, whatever. Yeah. And she's like, she like bites his neck, and then she like he like moves, and she gets up, and she's like, Ugh! and he's like, "Did you just?" And he feels his neck. He's like, he looks at her, and she's got, she's like, "I didn't do anything. There was a bug. I, I, there was a yeah, bug. Like, there was a mosquito. There was a big mosquito. Big mosquito." And I, I hit it. I and he's like, it. "I can see the blood on your mouth." <laughs> she's like, "No." Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's got moments. I kind of like this show, dude. I think it's actually, I more than like it. I I, I think the are show you, is Are cute. you telling me I need to put it in Tippity Top? I I would put this one in the Tippity Top. It's my favorite anime, new anime All of right. the season. All right, Vivo. I had it marked as doing just fine, but if you say Tippity Top, we'll put it in Tippity Top. I, I think it's a I think it's a Tippity Top, That's dude. your numberiest, oneiest? Yep. All right, man. Yeah. If it's Tippity Top, it's a Tippity Top, baby. Yeah. 
I think so, dude. Um, I, I really did quite enjoy it. I love, I love the style of the show. Mm-hmm. It kind of has a little bit of humor there. Um, I didn't know, I, I didn't expect what I was going at. Now, I will say, mm-hmm. why does uh, it, intro, why does, intro looks really good. Oh, yeah, I like that intro a lot. Why, why does it always have to be in the middle school? You could at least bump this up to high school. It could be early college. Were they, was he not in high school? I thought he was in high school. He's he in middle school. He's in ninth grade. Uh, he's okay. fourteen. All right. It says that he's fourteen. Yep, that sounds uh, right. But he has to fall in love with her, and he he feels nothing at all. Okay, feels nothing at all. It's got yeah. I, you know, we say feel but, nothing at all. Know, it make, makes me think of whatever, uh, dude. I'm gonna give it a pass. Let's not pretend like I'm not. Yeah, makes me think of <laughs> blooming to you, and I'm like, huh, yeah, yeah, nothing at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, been a lot of the. I mean, obviously, one of them was an older series that we just watched, but been a lot of the, you know, fantastically, you know, possibly ancient uh, characters falling in, falling in love and or getting in relationships with mm-hmm. people who are much younger, you know, yeah. teens and whatnot. But yeah, whatever. It's not like they haven't existed forever. So there you yeah. go. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I can't wait to see where this one goes. I mean, it's yeah. definitely getting I, I Again, I personally would put it a little bit lower. Again, camera's a little too leery for me, but. You put you say it's a tippy top. I'll go with a tippy top. Yeah. Fuck it. And the girl, the girl looks like a a, a mix between Marn from um, oh god damn it that that show a couple seasons ago that I loved my dress up darling. Uh, okay. And Toga from My Hero Academia. They, oh, they kind of okay. like if you blended them together. This is kind of what she looks like. Yeah, it's yeah, I, cool. I, I can see I, that. I like, she does I like have the that, design. It's cool. She does have those crazy eyes. Yeah. She looks a little bit. They got them wild eyes, baby. Ooh, wild now. Crazy. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's now do these we got these last two right here. So, uh, which one do you want to do first? Well, let's do Knights with the Cat. I'm gonna put it in the tippity top because it's a cat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Knights with the Cat. I watched the trailer. I it's did most- just rescue another cat a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, you did. I got. I see the kitty. Uh, so Knights with the Cat. Uh, there's a dude. He's got a cat. Uh, I don't know if the, it looks like very. You know. Um, kind of kind of simplistic animation it might be a short i don't know we don't really talk about shorts here but jimmy mo also had really simple inf- uh animation and that ended up being a full series so and i'm into it it looks cute uh don't know anything about it except there is a cat the trailer the cat's like doing cat shit mm-hmm. it's real cute there's a dude there's a lady i don't know if he's dating the lady or if he's trying to date the lady but there's a cat and the cat's fucking cute as shit so yep. Yeah, fuck it. It's tippity top. The maid I hired recently is mysterious. So here's the thing about this. Here's the problem. With this. Okay. Yeah. So I read a little bit about it and I watched the trailer for it. And there's, it's kind of like uh, you remember Duke of Death and his maid. They yeah. sent the, they sent the kid off to live by himself because anything he touches dies. It's magically touches and it magically dies. Uh, and then he has a sexy maid uh, who likes to tease him. So this one. Uh, kid is also living by himself at a mansion out in the woods, but not because he's, you know, magic or anything, but because his parents died and that's just where he lives. Okay. Uh, so he lives by himself and then apparently a sexy, big titty, uh, dark skin maid, why not, shows up, uh, and is just like, hey, uh, I'm a maid and I want to work for you. And he's like, what? So this is like a kid and an adult. You know, it. You know, they might be doing the thing where oh, she's actually a teen, but she just looks like that. I don't know, but it appears to be an adult woman and a kid, and uh, he is like apparently suspicious of her. She kind of acts weird. She likes to kind of mess with the dude or whatever. I don't know. I do know that it is tagged on at least one website as a rom com, uh, and that could be a missed tag. But the fact that it says that has me like uh uh-uh, uh nah hell nah hell nah hell nah hell nah. Uh, glacial chasm. Okay, but we don't know. I'm going off that. I'm going off a description of the trailer I saw. Nah, man. You might nah. be pleasantly surprised. We'll see. I might be. Lord knows I've been wrong before, yeah. and that's okay. But this one, nah, man, nah. And then we got a we got a couple more that are in Netflix jail, I believe. We got some in Netflix jail. Who knows jail. how long Disney Plus jail is? Right. We do have some that actually. Uh, were there, from is pre- a, there is a there is a there a show about. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's about an uncle that is returning from yes. Isekai. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I think it's. I, I had it written. It's down Jumanji. Here. Hang on, let me find Uncle from Another World. Yes, I, yeah. I have that in my notes. Uh, there's also a few that dropped on uh, Netflix in full from like previous seasons. There was like a, I think it's called Vampire in the Garden. Uh, apparently is pretty cool. I didn't watch it. Didn't watch that one yet. There's Bastard Heavy Metal Fantasy, which yeah, I have the original very, Bastard. But sounds I very violent. Yeah. yeah, I haven't watched that one. I saw it was like a sequel thing and I was like, yeah, I'm good. Uh, but yeah, there's some, there's some stuff out there, pretty interesting stuff, stuff, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's also one that I saw called KJ File, 
which is kaiju file it's about big monsters and shit can't find anything about it apparently it dropped it doesn't appear to be streaming anywhere so if you huh. find it you're gonna have to find it uh somewhere less than yeah it regular. might be it might be going to disney plus dude and god knows how long it's no fucking get telling there. but yeah uh that's what we got that's the list baby uh quick recap we got our snooze, we got our glacier cats, we got our cliffhangers. We're just going to talk about the doing just fine tippity top. We got my stepdaughter, stepmom's daughter is my ex. Shocked me as much as anyone that I enjoyed that one. I just got a babysitting pretty cute. Shine on Bakumatsu bad boys. Pretty wild looking. Chimmy Mo, cute and weird and fun. Shine post, uh, weirdly smooth animation and I loved it. Yuri Deco, fucking strange and I'm into it. Parallel World Pharmacy is the only Sakai that I would watch any more of, quite frankly. Uh, Likers Recoil violent and yet really fun odd couple pairing pretty fun pretty funny phantom of the idol also very funny uh i'm looking forward to watch more of that one call of the night uh roger it's his your favorite right my favorite of the season your favorite of this season not a sequel season you got a vampire girl and a teen boy who's trying to become a vampire and then we got knights with the cat which was a soul read so we won't count that one but yeah fun yeah. time yeah into it uh, feels, it feels like not as bulky of a season as usual. Feels good. Uh, I mean, there's still 25 on this list. Yeah, man. Two of them are still reads of 23, so not 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 huge. Yeah, man, we got there. But there is a decent uh, decent amount of you know potentially quality stuff. Even some of the cliffhangers really have their chance to work their way out of there. It could indeed. Yeah, who who can say? But yeah, there's some interesting stuff, and I'm looking forward to watching more of it and seeing what's up. Uh, yeah, good time. Yep. yep. Uh, what are we doing? Do you want to do a little baby ramble or? Uh, we could we could just talk right here. Um, so the first thing let's that, talk about um, it. The first Let's talk about I, it. The first thing I want to this talk is, about. This is technically the end of the show, and yeah. we're just gonna chat for a little bit. So yep. uh, yeah. Bye. So if you wanna hang out with us, uh, here we are. Um, so first and foremost, my, bo- I will, my boy's I will, been having a week. Yeah, I've, I've had a very long week. Um, I do want to say first uh, that. As far as uh, the videos and stuff for the channel go, I'm, you know, on YouTube, I think I'm just going to start releasing the episode as one whole thing. Okay. Instead of breaking it apart and doing all the extra editing and then, you know, because I know that our good buddy Josh watches them or whatever, and he has to wait two weeks to watch these sons of bitches, you know, mm. and, and whenever he catches up. Yeah. Um, and it just, I don't know, man. We we get so many more of our views or our listens on on other platforms and YouTube podcasts. I, I spend so much extra time putting these videos together that I don't actually really have to put together. Yeah, man. And I think we we get the same amount of of listens just just putting the whole show out there. Listens. So, yeah. So I'm just gonna start putting. You know, I might put a little animation in there here and there, but uh, for the most part, you know, I'm just gonna roll us out a full show and a podcast. Oh yeah. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is that t- today, um, you, you guys may remember if you, if you've been listening since the start of time, when we started, my mom was here all on the weekends. Uh, I got a call today that she passed away. Yep. Um, you know, she was a real one. RIP in peace. Rip to a real one, man. Um, uh, yeah. Bummer news. There's no real way to prepare for that. I mean, my mom was sick for a long time. That's why she was here. Yeah. Um, you know, for most of my life, my mom has been terminally ill. And when they say terminally, that means there is an, there isn't a date that's coming. Yeah. And, uh, found out today, this morning that that was, that, that was sometime early this morning. Mm. So, uh, it's been a rough day. Uh, both of my brothers came down. We started figuring out this stuff. It's very confusing. We are also all pretty young. You know, yeah. this isn't a, a normal situation. Um, but yeah, it's a bummer, man. Um, there were some funny stories that we talked about my mom on the podcast. You might remember. Yeah, man. I, I, man, I was, I'm never going to forget when we're hanging out here and she says she's got a pain in her side. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, you need to see a doctor. Roger's like, you know, you want some Pepto or something? She's like, nah, I think it's just a sharp turd. I'm I'm just going to massage it. Yeah. (laughs) So she had a sharp turd poking her. <laughs> and maybe maybe it was that sharp turd that took her out. I she, don't know. She loved the poo-poo jokes she and did. the fart jokes. And I, I thought I was going to pass out laughing when that shit happened. Yeah, my man. mom was fucking goofy. You She's know? funny as fuck, man. Um, uh, I, I'll read it. What a cool, I'll, I'll, what a cool I'll, gal. I'll, I'll read out my little thing that I wrote for, yeah, you know, little, for, little, yeah, for my family. And, you know, for you guys want to hear if you care to hear it. Uh, it may be therapeutic for me to, to say this out loud. So it's always good go. to talk. Um, I said, hey, everyone, I'm doing a quick post for the family and myself. My mom, Pamela, Pamela Moore was her name, passed away early this morning. She loved many of y'all on my list of friends. 
Um, I'm sure if you met her even once, you have a unique memory or experience, which is very true. Uh, whether it be from her opening up a spot in time uh, from her or in her house uh, to anybody that wanted it or needed it, or maybe her morbid sense of humor. There you go with that pointy ass sharp turn. Mm -hmm. um, she was genuinely a unique person, a true one of a kind, never to be defined by her illness or hardships. Uh, that of which she did have many. Uh, my mom did not have an easy life. Um, I feel terrible for for her, and it, you know she she dealt with a lot of terrible shit and got sick very young. Um, but the, the things that really defined her were not that it was her loud personality and her unwavering lack of shame. I didn't know if shame was the right word that I was looking for, so I put a little side note there saying I'm not sure if this is the right word. And what I mean by that is that uh, she was embarrassed by pretty much nothing. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that can embarrass her. <laughs> um, I remember at one point, this is another random story, you know, like she lost one of her teeth on the side <laughs> and she spent three months aring like a pirate. Arr. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, another good story <laughs> uh, I, I talked about today was, and we talked about this on channel one time, when our good buddy Corey that does the Let's Play with mm -hmm. me. Uh, my mom told him, she's like, you know what you look like? You look like The Rock. <laughs> and Cora was like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, thank you so much. <laughs> and what she was meaning to say, and she didn't know, was she was talking about Marvel's Ben Grimm, The Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, she, he, she, was like, she was like, you know, like, <laughs> like The Thing from The fan or The Rock from The Fantastic Four. And Corey's like, Fucking oh, nice one, mountain she's like, face. She's like, oh, he's like, oh, he, you, 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 you mean the thing? <laughs> I could just and hear my his mom was fucking, I could just hear his ass. Yeah, like, quiver, like, like, you know, I don't think it really hurt his feelings, and that was kind of mean spirited. But my mom was fucking dying. <laughs> oh um, shit. Yeah, That's good, good story. Shit. Yeah, um, oh, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she loved to embarrass anybody. Uh, she loved her family. She loved animals. She loved poop jokes. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I put in here that I think she'd be upset if I didn't mention anything about poops or fart in this. Hell yeah. Poops or farts in this. So that, so there you go. And uh, she loves so many of you. Today is truly surreal and the world's a little bit emptier. Thank you all for being kind to her. Uh, heart, heart, heart. Um, Roger Lee. Good shit, so, man. Yeah, that was my mom. That's kind of what she's about. She died today, and uh, total bummer. Um, we're, we're figuring out we, we're gonna be okay. We, yeah, the hard part was telling everybody, and we got through that. Uh, now, granted, the it's also confusing as to what you do immediately after, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, it's a lot of no, worries. people to get don't more. like to, to think about that. So, mm -hmm. um, and my mom never ever gave us accurate information, she'd always tell us that she. Uh, would want it. She's like, you know, she always said she wanted to be cremated, but she said if we don't do it, that we have to make sure that she gets stinky before we do a viewing. And she wants us, to, she's like, I want you to make sure they have my eyes pulled open and maybe dangle my <laughs> arm out of the casket. <laughs> she told my wife that she also <laughs> may want a spring loaded contraption for whenever they open it. Her body parts just go flying everywhere. <laughs> So that God was, damn it! <laughs> that was my mom. Um, oh, gonna miss her. There is, there is surely a little bit less laughter in the world, but God damn yeah. it, yeah, <laughs> that's a fucking funny lady. Yep, yep. So that's that's oh. what I've been going through. Um, <laughs> obviously, I wanted to press on and do the podcast today. Um, I don't want to slow down doing anything. I did take the weekend off of work, and by take it off, I mean I was going to take maybe a day off or so. Yeah. But I realized that I'm going to need more time, and my boss was more than gracious to you know force me telling me not do like do not come back this weekend so there you go man um so yep yeah, that's it man um this was the podcast that was my last little bit of ramble there that i want to do i don't know if you want to talk about anything else um, i really man um i did watch some more anime but we'll talk about that next i'll talk week. about them next time and maybe maybe next time i think i think next time it's safe to say that we can probably talk about some of the sequel seasons oh yeah for sure season. for sure so you can expect that from us next time well that being the case um yeah we'll be talking about more new animes next time thank you so much for listening yeah links are in the description thank you to the musicians we ain't gonna do all the stuff yeah. this time it's a it's a special ending yeah. for a special lady 
Uh, Our good buddy Haas Thomas tastes better. Yeah. My mom loves his triangle ass. <laughs> You said he showed up to the house. He he was he was hanging out at our house. He, he was, was hanging out. My mom he, would just let anybody come and stay for however they wanted. And he was hanging out and he thought it'd be hilarious to, to just walk out Oz with us. Oz was a big dude at one time. He's not so big anymore, but he used to be a big dude. Like bigger a big, than me. big wide man. Yeah, big and wide man. He had, and he came out and he just had, the, we had this cowboy hat in the house and he was just <laughs> covering his dick and balls up with that hat. Just, just, and my mom was. Now, was he him. holding it or was it hanging? He was holding it. Okay, he, he was, was he, holding it. He covered his part. I was going to say, that'd be some shit if he had it and then uh, my mom hanging. was my mom was fucking rolling on the floor yeah and then, fucking and, then and then and then he turned around to walk back to the bathroom and he had the hank hill ass. yeah he had that triangle ass and she was <laughs> she was fucking dying dude fucking hell um oh that's a good time yeah. uh yeah well <laughs> so yeah there we go good buddy hoss Thank, That's thank a little you. story you had with my mom. Shout out to Haas, uh, Papetti Theft, and Married with Sea Monsters. Uh, links in the description. We love y'all. You know, hey, love somebody today. Give them a hug. Tell them how much you care. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, sad fact is we don't all last forever, so yep. none of us do. So tell your friends and your family you love them while you can. Thank you so much. And uh, you want to go out with a moment of silence for Mama Pam? Yeah, man. Are we still gonna say our thingy? Well, say love, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Do you all want one to take us out on, yeah. or do you want to no. just? Let I got, go? I got one to take us out. Oh, on. you do have we'll, one. We'll do, okay. we'll do the silence, but I, that's what we'll go out on. All right. So I, we'll we'll have a brief moment of silence, and then you just hit it when you feel yeah. like. So from all of us here at the Good Buddies Anime Universe, I am your good buddy Brandon. And I am your good buddy Roger. Oh, shit. That's good.